Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's start talking about uh, direct sums of modules. Given a collection, so let's say given for now a finite collection m1, m2, mk, let's assume they are all R modules for some ring R not necessarily commutative. Uh, we define a module called their direct sum. So, we define a module m called their direct sum uh, m called their direct sum as follows as follows we first uh, need to specify what m is as a set so purely as a set it's just the cross product of these as a set in other words, the elements of M look like uh, tuples, ordered tuples x1, x2, xk, where each xi is an element of the corresponding mi, i runs from 1 to k. And uh, we need to also specify how this becomes a, a, an R module. This becomes a module via component wise. So, this is a set and component wise addition and scalar multiplication. So, what this means is uh, when you want to add x1 through xk with y1 through yk just add each component dot 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 x k plus y k on the one hand and uh, if you want to multiply by the scalar r, r times x 1 x through x k is just r x 1 comma r x 2 till r x k and all these hold for all uh, R running over elements of the ring and for all x i y i elements of m i i from 1 to k. Okay, So, this is what we mean by component wise addition and multiplication. So, this is a this is a keyword here. Okay, Now, it is very easy to check that this makes m into a module. So, I leave that as an exercise. Uh, at the end of the day, every axiom that you need, you need to check will hold because it holds in each component. Okay? So, uh, first observation here, easy observation is that uh, M is an R module under these definitions. Okay? So, exercise. Okay? Now, this guy is called the um, uh, direct sum. So, here are some, some remarks. So, m is called the direct sum of the m i's and is usually denoted uh, by the symbol direct sum. So, this is the usual notation for the direct sum, direct sum m i, i ranging from 1 to k. Okay, m is usually denoted like this. Okay, uh, another uh, short remark here one can actually define direct sums even for infinite collections of uh, modules, not necessarily for finite collections. So, I will just uh, state that quickly can also define <coughs> uh, something called the direct sum of an infinite collection. So, now i ranges over a potentially infinite indexing set i, one can also define this notion. But the key thing to remember is that this turns out not to equal the product as a set. Okay? So, if you have an infinite collection of modules, 
the direct sum is well it's actually a certain subset of the product okay more precisely it is the it's that subset of the product in which only finitely many of the entries are allowed to be non zero okay so anyway that's something that uh, we won't need to uh, we won't encounter uh, in this course so for now we will not worry about that okay okay so let's just do an example of uh, direct sum of modules so easiest example is to take a billion groups if i take my ring to be the integers i can take uh, any any abelian group is automatically a, a z module so i can take the cyclic group of order 2 and the cyclic group of order 3 okay so this is all cosets so what is this comprise this is all cosets of the form a plus 2z right a running over the integer so really there are two cosets the odd and the even numbers this comprises all the cosets uh, congruent to 0 1 and 2 modulo 3 and of course uh, these are both r modules so what is the the direct sum now mean it just means i take m1 direct sum m2 which is sort of the same notation as this is well as i said it's m1 cross m2 with component wise operations right so with component wise comp wise plus and scalar multiplication so for example if I took an element from m1 direct sum m2, so let us take the element uh, what we would call 1 bar which is 1 plus 2 z comma uh, 1 plus 3 z. So, here is an element of, of m1 direct sum m2. So, how do I perform addition? So, let us say I want to add to this uh, 2 plus 3 z, then all I have to do is just add each component separately and the answer is well it is 2 plus 2 z which is the same as the 0 coset and 3 plus 3 z which is again the 0 coset. So, here is the addition for example. Okay, So, uh, scalar multiplication similarly. So, this is uh, uh, m1 direct sum m2. So, well it is a sub it is a set with 6 elements and in fact you actually have encountered this before when studying groups and the Chinese remainder theorem. So, for example, here is a good way to understand what this direct sum is. Uh, it is actually the, the isomorphic to the, the cyclic group of order 6 okay. as z modules therefore, z mod 6 z I claim is isomorphic. So, if there is an isomorphism to this direct sum that we just constructed. Okay. And what is the isomorphism? So, like I said you have already encountered this. So, recall what is what was called the Chinese remainder theorem in the context of abelian groups and uh, the map is the following given any coset a plus six z you just map it to the corresponding a plus two z and a plus three z. So, given a number a modulo 6 you just map it to the congruence class of a modulo 2 and a modulo 3 and recall that this map was an isomorphism ok. So, I am sort of uh, referring you back to these to this lecture the Chinese remainder theorem. So, recall phi was an isomorphism. So, it is an isomorphism of groups well they are both abelian groups in this case. So, they are in fact an isomorphism of z modules in our case therefore of an isomorphism of z modules. So, in this case the direct sum is nothing but the, um, the, the well we can identify it with the z module z mod 6 z. Okay. So, um, so, conclusion z mod 6 z is actually isomorphic to the direct sum. Okay. Now, uh, let us do another example. So, this is an example with z modules. Uh, Here is a sort of a general example. So, if r is any ring, so recall you can think of r as a module over itself by the left multiplication. Now, let us just do the following. Let us take uh, m1, m2, mk to all be just r okay, as a left module over itself. So, I just think of all of the all uh, all the mi's as just being r itself. 
So what I am trying to do now to form the direct sum is it is like I am taking k copies of r. So what does the direct sum now become? So the direct sum of the m i's i ranging from 1 to k. Well by definition this is just as a set it is just m1 cross m2 cross m k. So in other words it is k copies of the ring r itself. So this is k copies. Okay, so as a set I am just forming the cross product of r with itself k times. So uh, this set is what we usually denote as r to the k. right? So this is uh, the, the, the uh, direct sum of r with itself k times is as a set r to the k with component wise addition and scalar multiplication. Okay. Um, so this is an again an example of a of a direct sum. Now uh, let me look at uh, direct sums uh, in relation to homomorphisms. So there is uh, there are some obvious homomorphisms that uh, are important. So suppose I again have the same setting. I have m one through m k, which are uh, R modules. Then observe that I have a map from each m j. So let me take any any one of these guys, and from that I have a map to the direct sum. Okay, what's this map? So let's give this map a name. Let me call it alpha sub j. This map does the following: If I have an element x in the module m j, it maps it to the ordered tuple is 0 in all the other components except in the in the jth component alone. So, this is now the jth component. It takes the value x. Okay. So, this is the, the map from m j to the direct sum. So, this is a well defined map and uh, as is clear because the right hand side has all component wise operations, it is clear that alpha j is a homomorphism is a R module homomorphism okay, because addition goes to addition x plus y goes to x plus y on the right side and similarly when you multiply by r on the left side goes to multiplication by r on the right side. Okay, so alpha j is in fact a homomorphism and uh, what is more alpha j is an injective map alpha j is injective. In other words, it is a one to one map that is again clear because x maps to the sort of the or tuple with x in the jth component. right? So, two different things cannot map to the same thing on the right side. Okay? So, it is clearly an injective map and uh, so if you look at the image of alpha j, so consider the image of alpha j. So, what is the image? It is well one way of saying it is you, you just take all uh, tuples in which so, this is can be written like this 0 cross 0 in all the components. The jth component alone I take the whole module m j. Okay. So, that is the image of alpha j. Uh, recall the image of a homomorphism is always uh, uh, is a sub module. So, what does this uh, map alpha j do? It maps m j injectively right it is a one to one map and instead of taking the entire uh, direct sum on the right side let me just look at this image that I described for you image of alpha j this is this set. So, consider alpha j from m j to the image of alpha j clearly this map is an isomorphism now. So, why is it an isomorphism it was already injective. and since I have restricted on the right hand side to just the image, it is also surjective. Okay. So, alpha j from m j to image of alpha j is in fact an isomorphism of modules. So, what that means is that uh, in some sense see and, and, and recall that image of alpha j is a subset of the direct sum. Right? This is a sub of the direct sum m i. Okay. So, the image of alpha j is a copy is an isomorphic copy of m j. So, what we have inside the direct sum really is a copy of each of these um, uh, each of these modules m i. Okay? 
and so sometimes one draws the following picture uh, so i have m1 m2 m3 and so on mk the direct sum of these modules mi is there now from each of these uh, modules i have this map what i'm calling alpha j right or alpha 1 from m1 to this alpha 2 from m2 to this and alpha k from m k to this. So, I have all these homomorphisms and each homomorphism does the following. Uh, it takes the corresponding m i isomorphically to a copy of itself which sits inside the direction. Okay? And the way it sits inside is what we described right here. It is zeros everywhere else and only in the jth component you, you keep m j as it is. Okay, so, this is one way of understanding what the, the uh, direct sum really is. Now, uh, let us talk about another sense in which the word direct sum appears this notion and this is sometimes called the just to distinguish it from the earlier one we sometimes call this the internal direct sum. Okay, so, this notion is, is usually called internal direct sum. So, I am just putting the internal within parentheses right now uh, because soon we will see that for all practical purposes this internal direct sum is really the same as a direct sum in some sense. Okay, so, we will make that precise, but for now let us keep this, this word uh, internal to remind us that this is different from what I have just described. Okay, now, what is this internal direct sum? Uh, what is the context? So, what do I need for this? So, I need a module m. So, suppose, suppose m is an r module. So, suppose m is an r module and I have a collection of sub modules of m okay? and m i uh, is a sub module of m for all i from 1 to k. Okay? So, I have k different uh, k I have k sub modules of my module m. Okay? Now, uh, definition we say that m is the internal direct sum we say that m is the internal direct sum of the m i of this collection of sub modules m i i goes from 1 to k if the following happens if each element m belonging to m can be written as a sum can be written as a sum m equals m1 plus m2 plus mk, uh, m i is coming from the corresponding modules m i for all i uh, in a unique manner. Okay, so, there are two parts to this to this definition on the one hand you can write it in other words there exists such a way of writing m and there is a uniqueness part also that this way of writing must be unique. Okay? So, what does this unique uh, mean? So, let me just explain that a little bit more unique manner means if I can find another such decomposition m 1 prime plus m 2 prime plus m k prime is another such decomposition of m or way of writing it into a sum then in other words with m i dashes all coming from the sub module capital m i then the m i and the m i dashes have to be the same for all i from 1 to k. Okay? So, this is the definition uh, we say that m is an internal direct sum if every element admits a uh, decomposition into a sum of m i's. Uh, in a unique manner. 
okay now uh, let's now uh, reconcile these two notions of internal direct sum and what i initially called a direct sum uh, so now observe that uh, these modules mi's so when i define these modules mi's uh, i mean when i gave you the modules mi's i said they are all sub modules of uh, some ambient module m right so i have an m that's my module and inside m i have these sub modules so that's m1 well any two sub modules at least intersect in the origin i mean in in the zero element so let's say let's draw a better picture so let's say that's m1 maybe this is m2 that's m3 and so on so i give you a bunch of sub modules but uh, a sub module can of course be thought of as a module in its own right forget the fact that there is an ambient module uh, uh, a module which contains it just think of each of the mi's as just being modules in their own right okay so view the mi's as modules in their own right and when you do that we can then form their direct sum okay so this is the direct sum that i talked about at first sometimes called the external direct sum as opposed to the internal so let's form their direct sum i equals 1 to k okay so recall what is this as a set this is very different from uh, the elements of this external direct sum are not going to be elements of m or anything okay they are in fact uh, you know tuples of elements right remember this is just as a set it's the cross product m1 cross m2 cross m3 dot 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 till mk so this is some some new set it's a it's a module in its own right again the direct sum okay so we can form this this new object direct sum but what's interesting here is the following that now consider the the following uh so so maybe to to phrase this uh, properly let me just say let m i be uh uh a uh, sub uh, so let me say b sub modules okay i from 1 to k so this is a collection of k sub modules of an ambient module i can view those as modules in their own right and form the direct sum now from this direct sum there is always a homomorphism that i can define to my module m okay so consider the map phi from this direct sum so what is this this map going to be well a typical element here looks like this m1 m2 mk so what I, what i'll do under this map phi is to just send it to the sum of these elements okay so this is for all mi is coming from mi okay now uh, this map i can always define whenever i have a collection of sub modules and it is very easy to see again that this map phi is in fact a homomorphism so phi is a uh, r homomorphism r r is the ring over which everything is a module um check this is again from the fact that the direct sum has all component wise operations okay so phi is a r homomorphism that's very easy now the key point here is that uh observe that if the sub modules m i if if the ambient module m is an internal direct sum of the sub modules then what is what does it mean well it means the following if you go back to this definition if m is the internal direct sum then every element of m can be written as a sum of of mi's okay what does that mean it means that this map phi which i have just defined this map is surjected right because every element of m has one such decomposition okay every m can be written like this now uh so phi is surjective is really the first part of the definition and the second thing says everything has a unique such decomposition okay what does that mean well that just means that phi is injective phi is a one to one map right because given any element on on the right 
I can only find a, a single tuple m1, m2, mk such that m can be written as their sum. Okay? So, what this means is that more or less by definition observe that note uh, m is the internal direct sum of the sub modules m i 1 to k is the same as saying that this map phi which I just defined is an isomorphism phi is an isomorphism. Okay, isomorphism of R modules of course, everything is over, over some ring R. Okay. So, what this means is that this notion of internal direct sum, right? if m is the internal direct sum in some sense it is isomorphic to the external direct sum of the MIs. Okay. So, that is sort of why one after a point stops uh, making this distinction between internal and external, at, in some sense it is really the same notion. Okay. Now, uh, let us look at this uh, internal direct sum or direct sum now in the special case of uh, where you only have two sub modules. Okay. So, this is uh, you know this is something which comes up very frequently. So, let us just take uh, two sub modules. So, so let me look at uh, suppose m1, m2 are both sub modules of m sub modules m is an r module as before then uh, let us look at m1 direct sum m2 so what does it mean to say that m is the internal direct sum of m1 and m2 okay so m is the internal direct sum so we will now denote it like this m equals m1 direct sum m2 in other words it's the internal direct sum so, this is now notate, we will just use the same notation for the you know for both direct sums internal or external i.e. in other words m is the internal direct sum of these two sub modules ok. So, then observe then note the following m is the internal direct sum. Uh, can be written as follows uh, rephrased as follows if and only if m1 plus m2 so two things should happen one the sum of these modules should equal m okay so recall we talked about this general construction of sub modules this is the usual sum of sub modules okay, and what was sum sum was supposed to be the following you take the union of those two guys m1 and m2 and look at the smallest sub module the sub module of m generated by the union okay that was the definition of the sum and we had back when we talked about this construction we also said the sum is you know what are elements of the sum they are nothing but things of the form m1 little m1 plus little m2 where m1 comes from capital m1 and m2 comes from capital m2 okay so go back and look at the the video on sums of sub modules so here here are two conditions number one that uh, the sum the ordinary sum of these two guys should be m and property 2 the intersection of these two should be just the 0 sub module. So, I claim that if these two properties are satisfied or yeah if these two properties are satisfied then m is just the internal direct sum of m 1 and m 2 okay, and conversely. So, let us prove one direction the other is uh, sort of similar. So, let me prove the, the reverse direction. If I know that m1 plus m2 is m and m1 intersection m2 is 0, why does it Im imply that capital M is the internal direct sum of m1 and m2. So, let us prove the converse. So, we need to show that given any element m in m uh, need to show that m can be written as a sum m1 plus m2 m1 belonging to so mi belonging to mi in a unique fashion okay so let's prove this uh, number 1 m can be written like this because so firstly observe since just the ordinary sum of m1 and m2 is all of m 
this means that there exists m1 in m1 and m2 in m2 such that m can be written as their sum okay this again from from like i said from that video on uh, sums of submodules now let's prove the uniqueness that comes from the second uh, part of the hypothesis okay so let's show uniqueness so if I can find another such decomposition. So, let us say I have one such and another one, then let us do the following. Let us subtract, um, let us pull the m1 dash to one side and m2 to the other side. So, this is the equation that we now get and now we make the observation that the left hand side is an element of m1, the right hand side being a difference of two elements of m2 is an element of m2 okay so here is an element which lives so whatever you call this element something x maybe now this element x lives both in m1 and m2 which means that x belongs to their intersection but which by hypothesis is just zero okay so this means x is zero and uh, x is zero automatically means that these two guys are equal to each other right so what is the conclusion from here it's completed this means that m1 equals m1 dash m2 equals m2 dash okay so that completes the verification of the the converse uh, so let me just say this is similar so let me just leave this as an exercise okay so this is the case of uh, two modules two sub modules m1 and m2 Okay, now uh, this is sometimes called a pair of complementary submodules when you have two modules which uh, whose direct sum is the is the whole. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about them in a later video.